Well, welcome back to the Faith of the Fathers podcast. I'm your host, Carl Gessler, here to reignite the faith of our fathers. Today, I wanted to share a few thoughts with you. This is, on the day I'm recording this, it is packing day for us, so there's a ton of stuff going on. I'm a little stressed out because we are about to go on a two-week ministry tour across the country. Oh, well, more of in like a circle of the northeast. Anyway, it's a circle in our country. Uh, and I'm thinking about what I want to share. Um, we're going to be going to several different places. And one of the challenges for us as we travel around the country, challenges for me personally, is we're constantly going in different into different contexts. A Christian rehab center, a, a living room, a park, a church. Uh, and so the the audience, the expectations of the audience is different, um, and their circumstances are different, and it's not like you can just have one message that you repeat everywhere you go. Plus, I'm not really wired that way to just like um, have a memorized message that I give the exact same message everywhere I go. I'm just not like that. Um, I like to speak from the heart. Of course, preparation helps. This particular episode uh, that you're listening to does not have a lot of formal preparation. I just wanted to share some thoughts because I started. we started to sing this song as a family uh, called Fullness. It's really simple. It just says, Father, I, I just want to know you. Take the limits off of who I think you are. And of course, and the next few lines are, Jesus, I just want to know you. Take the limits off of who I think you are. Spirit, I want to know you. Take the limits off of who I think you are. And then with a little um, bridge or chorus, whatever you want to call it, it's just repeating, I receive, I receive, I receive it, and I believe, I believe, I believe it. Um, and, you know, it's one of those 7-Eleven songs, as some people claim, or uh, some people complain. It's the same seven words sung 11 times. It's a great prayer. My kids really like it. It's good music. Uh, but I've been thinking about that, about that idea of being full of God. Um, and as I was reading the Bible during my prayer time this morning, I was reading the Gospel of John. And uh, with the, the beginning of the Gospel of John, uh, John says, of his fullness, speaking of Jesus, speaking of God, of his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. And so we're going to be going to a women's uh, rehab center. And just what came to my mind, my heart about that is, the inheritance that we have from our father. You know, we all have an inheritance from our father. When my dad died, I didn't have any kind of financial inheritance other than inheriting a working business. I still had to learn how to make money at that business. I had no financial inheritance, um, but I did have a huge inheritance in uh, the knowledge of the love of my father for me. That's just one of the things. So the knowledge of how to do a job and how to do it well, the knowledge of who I am, the knowledge of what uh, I'm supposed to do and, and who I'm supposed to be as a man in the world. These are things that uh, there are many men who have received an incredible financial heritage or inheritance from their fathers, but they don't know who they are. And so they end up in prison because of uh, drugs and such because they were not happy and they they were empty and they sought to fill that with something else. And in many cases, it's drugs, sex, and rock and roll, you know, the, the classics. Um, and so they end up in prison. So their, their inheritance, they had a financial inheritance, but their spiritual inheritance, um, their emotional inheritance was, was lacking. It was many times it was nothing at all or something even worse. Sometimes our inheritance is abuse. Uh, neglect, abandonment, debt, shame, anger. You know, I think there are a lot of people who, um, especially women, that kind of quietly despise their fathers because they knew that their fathers were looking at porn. And that made them feel like trash. I think a lot of times that's not even spoken, but it is It is known in our spirits um, in our spirits as men, we know that we have shame, even if nobody knows about what we're doing. I think in the spirits of our daughters, many times they pick up that we carry shame and they kind of carry a shame with us. 
because of that. So there's all these kind of inheritances that we receive. You don't end up in a rehab center because you had a good childhood. And, and you know, I have not yet met, um, I mean, there, there are exceptions, but there's, there are also reasons that people do what they do, that, that they, the decisions that they make. When they feel empty, when there's something lacking, they go looking for something to fill it. And, you know, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So every parent, including me, has failed their child. Um, my goal as, as a father is to, obviously, to fail as little as possible. But I, I have already failed, um, you know, uh, in various ways. We all do. Um, but I want to equip my kids to know how to deal with it, how to deal with disappointment and anger and all that stuff, because they also will fail. So they need to learn how to have grace, how to receive grace. And the reason Jesus said, unless you forgive others, your Father in heaven won't forgive you. There is this thing about when we discover, oh, I need grace. Now I, I can realize that I also need to give my father uh, or my mother grace as well. Um, but anyway, you don't end up in a rehab center because uh, you're happy. You ended up there because your life fell apart, um, seeking to fill yourself with something that was killing you. That's what drugs are. And not everyone goes for drugs. There's people that go because they're addicted to porn. There are people that go because they're addicted to gambling. You know, all sorts of things, even food. I haven't met anyone who's gone there for food addiction, but I, I would guess that that's the case. Food can definitely be an addiction. So I wanted to talk to, I want to talk to these women about the inheritance that they have in Jesus, because John says that of God's fullness, of Jesus's fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. But have you received the fullness of God? Have I received the fullness of God? The answer is no. <laughs> I couldn't be, my feet wouldn't touch the ground if I received the fullness of God. And yet, to some extent, technically, I have received it in the sense that it is available to me. The fullness of God. On the cross, Jesus gave himself completely and fully to us. We don't often think about it, but Jesus was crucified naked. The whole point of the crucifixion is a way to cause as much pain, physical and emotional, to, to the person being punished uh, as possible. So Jesus was whipped, he was humiliated, he was nailed to a cross and hung naked on a tree for us. He gave himself, every piece of him, to us. Uh, and so we need to learn to receive it. So his fullness is given to us and we have received it, but it's like an inheritance. And this is why I've gone to this theme of inheritance. It's like an inheritance that is preserved for you. Paul actually puts it this way, reserved for you in heaven, like the bank of heaven. And uh, it's there for you to withdraw, to receive from it. But most of us don't know that we have it. We don't know that it belongs to us. And we also don't know, if it does belong to us, how to access it. And so this is interesting because um, I talked about being filled with the Spirit, and some people have asked me to talk more about that. How, how do you get full of the Holy Spirit? And I haven't talked about that that much because I'm not, I, I haven't really known what to say about it. I speak in tongues. I, was, I received the gift of speaking in tongues many years ago. I don't think of that as being necessarily the same thing as being filled with the Spirit. It is from the Holy Spirit, and so in a sense, yes, it's being filled with the Spirit. But being filled with the Spirit is a whole lot more than that. Uh, I don't think it's less than that either, though. I think, you know, the gift of tongues is one of the gifts, one of the many gifts of the Holy Spirit, and you can receive it if you want it. And I recommend it. You, sh you know, it's good for you. It's not going to hurt you. It's a gift from God. Uh, but there, it's, it's more than that. Um, so, the, uh, the subject of deliverance, being delivered from demons in our lives, uh, has opened my eyes. Uh, it's just helped me comprehend things in a new way. Like I've said before, I have always believed in the presence of demons, that um, we are called to cast out demons. I've just, I just never did it. One of the reasons that I've never consciously, until recently, 
cast out a demon is because I just didn't know like how it worked. And I think in my imagination, it, it looked very dramatic. It looked, um, you know, I think Hollywood has conditioned us to see everything in highly sensational terms um, so that if you don't see it like we've seen it in the movies, then it's not real. Um, I think that's really muddled our ideas of the spiritual realm. So one of the things I've noticed in uh, casting out demons is sometimes, many times, there's like no physical manifestation. There's no foaming at the mouth. There's no rolling around on the ground. I did share a story of something that happened in this room uh, where someone's shirt was moving as I was commanding this demon to leave. And it was like it kind of crawled up his shirt and bounced off and then it was gone. Okay, that happens, and that that does happen. But it, many times, people will just say something like, "I feel lighter." Uh, you know, they don't feel anything at, at all at, at, that they can notice at first. But you identify a spirit, maybe a spirit of rejection, um, and you command it to leave. By the end of the time of your prayer time together, they just say they feel great. You know, but there is nothing, nothing tangible, um, nothing you could prove no like physical manifestation to prove to somebody else that anything took place in that moment. I think, uh, except that as time goes on, you see that this person, the change that happened in their life, the joy that they received, the freedom from what bur whatever burden it was that they were carrying remains. And you say, ah, something real took place there. I think that a very similar thing happens with being filled with the Holy Spirit. Um, for me personally, I grew up in a very um, spirit-filled home, worship music on all the time. The first uh, and maybe the only rated R movie I've ever seen was The Passion of the Christ. Uh, so um, I was filled with good influences and I was not filled with, um, with traumatic, dark influences. So in a sense, it was, I mean, it was just less dramatic for me to be filled with the Holy Spirit, um, it, although it was still profound. I think what happened for me was that I was at a conference uh, with 50,000 high school seniors and college students, uh, and it was called One Day. It was a passion conference in, in the year 2000, and I was just different after that event. I was filled with a, a fire uh, for worship. Before that, I was 100% committed to Christ. But after that, I was just, I had this inner joy. You know, uh, Jesus talked about us having uh, a river of living water bubbling up from inside of us and coming out of us. And I would say that that describes uh, what was happening to me, that I just came home. I want to sing these songs. I didn't even really play the guitar. I just wanted to sing those songs. Uh, and that's when I began leading worship. And it's been over 20 years and I haven't lost that fire at all. Um, so I praise God for that. Uh, later, I received the gift of speaking in tongues because in my mind at that time, I thought, well, if I don't speak in tongues, I guess I haven't received the Holy Spirit because I heard people talking about receiving the Holy Spirit and it was like overwhelming. They were knocked out on the floor. You know, they had uh, waves of, they felt like waves of heat were rolling over them and waves of joy and all these kinds of things. And for me, it was not, the moment of praying to receive the Holy Spirit was not like that. Uh, and that's fine. So that's the conclusion I'm drawing. It's like, it's, it's, we don't have to, um, you don't determine whether or not you're filled with the Holy Spirit based upon some um, arbitrary experience. It is very simple to receive the Holy Spirit. You simply say, Jesus, I receive your spirit. Now there may be, um, hindrances in your life to the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible talks about us not grieving the Holy Spirit, and that's why deliverance ministry is so important too. Um, I was just reading this morning in um, uh, Smith Wigglesworth, a book by Smith Wigglesworth about some of the ministry that he did when he saw a lot of healing. Very interesting guy. Uh, but he was praying for this man who was on his deathbed, just skin and bones. Um, and the man had already been prayed for to receive healing and it didn't happen. So he was doubly discouraged. He had his walls up and Smith Wigglesworth was just really insistent, 
continued to pray for him. And actually what he prayed was just, he just whispered, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And that was his prayer. Very, um, you know, you don't have to be very uh, an intellectual to pray that. Um, and so while he's praying, this man begins to cry and he realized, and I, I forget specifically what it was, but I, uh, he realized it was something like uh, that he had resentment in his heart. And he let that go to Jesus and the healing poured over him. And he walked out of that bed that he had been in for a long time. Um, so there are times that um, when we're maybe uh, asking to be filled with the Spirit, that at the same time something is going to have to leave. You know, the way as a minister, the way I like to do it is let's identify the darkness and cast it out. And invite the Holy Spirit to come in. You know, only the Holy Spirit knows. Uh, he said, ask and you will receive. So if you ask, you will receive. But you also may receive a war if you haven't dealt with the darkness there. Because the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of holiness and the Spirit of darkness cannot coexist in the same place. They can coexist within the same body uh, because we are fragmented in many ways. Um, you know, when it says, when the Bible says that we're all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God, it's, um, you know, Christians are still sinners um, who are in the sense that we still sin. We are saints because we are washed by the blood of Jesus, but we still commit sin and we still need deliverance. This goes back to this idea of the fullness of God is there for us a hundred percent, but application is required. You have to receive it. And in receiving it, you have to drive things out. All of your sin is forgiven. It's all been paid for by the blood of Jesus. But if you're hanging on to it, uh, or it's hanging on to you because you haven't applied the blood of Jesus to you, that's not, uh, it's not hanging on to you because the blood of Jesus doesn't cover it. It's because you haven't applied the blood of Jesus to that particular area of your life. And so when you ask the Holy Spirit to come in, there's going to be a clash uh, if you are not also willing to let go of the darkness. And so deliverance ministry, being filled with the Holy Spirit, go hand in hand. Um, and, you know, uh, there are practical things that you can do to be filled with the Holy Spirit. One is, um, I guarantee you, you will change your life. You will radically change your life if you do two things. Stop watching television and listen only to worship music. Uh, you know, you can set a time period where you can do it like a fast, but do it for a month. Try it for a month. Put away the movies. Uh, I, was, I mean, you know, my family, we like to watch Andy Griffith or something like that. It depends, it depends on what God puts on your heart. But when I talk about getting rid of the movies, I mean get rid of the bad movies, <laughs> uh, which are many of them, most of them. Honestly, you can call me a prude, but most of them are bad. You know, in the sense of like, when you watch people engage in sex in a movie and you call it entertainment, well, just because you called it entertainment doesn't make it not porn. You know, they're just because you're not physically engaged in it. You know, Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust for her, you've committed adultery with her in your heart. You know, when there's so much porn on television that they, that is not called porn, but it is. And, you know, when we, um, we're taking that in, that is, it is, um, it, it's, it's defiling our soul and it's grieving the Holy Spirit. So put away those things, uh, Put away the cursing and the swearing and all the all the uh, things that grieve the Holy Spirit, and make it a ritual, make it a habit, make it a discipline. I'm only going to listen to worship music, and I'm going to read my Bible uh, when I get up in the morning. These are the things, and I'm going to do it religiously. We like to say I'm going to do it with discipline. I'm going to do it with consistency. These things, you may feel, you may like hate it at first. You may feel like if I don't get to watch TV, what is there to do? And you may feel like if I only listen to Christian worship music, I'll hate listening to music. Uh, you also may think the Bible, reading the Bible is boring. I don't like getting up in the morning. The question is though, do you want the fullness of God? Because I guarantee you, if you do these practical things, do them uh, religiously, do them 
consistently, just make it, force yourself to do it. Your life will be radically changed. You will be changed and you will be filled with the Holy Spirit. An idol is something that we believe is going to give us something that only God can truly give us. And we have many idols here in America. Uh, many Christians, we have idols. Jesus has promised us righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. If Jesus has promised you joy, what else, what more could you ask for? Joy is the thing that we all want more than anything else. If you have joy, you have everything. And if Jesus has promised you joy, what can the world give you that Jesus can't? And when we go to uh, illegitimate pleasures to try to satisfy ourselves, we are going to an idol. Idols always demand sacrifice, and those sacrifices always damage you. And so this is a habit of uh, putting away lies. What we're doing by um, cutting off these illegitimate um, ways of fulfilling desire, we are. it's an act of faith that's saying, I do trust that God is good enough, and I want to uh, that he will meet my desires. You know, faith is risky. You don't feel good in the first uh, moments of faith. You feel scared to death many times. You may feel repulsed. You know, I don't think it was uh, easy for Peter to step out onto the water, out of the boat, when he was came out to Jesus. Um, you know, for, for Matthew to think about giving up his his very lucrative business of being a tax collector to follow Jesus... You know, after he did it, I'm sure he felt great, but the thought of doing it was horrible. Uh, but you know what? There's um, when we are when someone is also getting off of uh, nicotine, if they're getting off of cocaine, whatever it is, you know, the body is repulsed by that idea. But it's an act of faith that says, "I am not going to listen to my feelings. Uh, I am not going to hold on to my security blanket. I'm going to trust." that when I step out, Jesus is going to meet me there. That's how the fullness of the Spirit comes in our lives. And I think we learn to do this more and more throughout our lives, which is why, again, deliverance ministry for Christians is vital for today. Many of us got saved, and then we got stagnant because we just thought, I've got it all. Even people who have had profound experiences being filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, prophesying, seeing miracles or whatever, that doesn't mean that you also might not, that you, you might still need deliverance because we're humans and the devil is full of tricks. He's a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Don't, they don't just leave us alone. They are constantly, uh, a, a beast like that is constantly finding a way, trying to find a way to cause us grief, which is why we have to stay alert, put on the full armor of God. But I also, as I was thinking about this inheritance of God's fullness that he wants to give us, he is not withholding himself from us. We are withholding ourselves from him. There's always more of Jesus to be had. And the question is, do you want him? But I love this as I was thinking about receiving an inheritance from our Father in heaven. Uh, I also was listening to Matthew's gospel. In, in Matthew 10, 20, Jesus says, telling his disciples about being his witnesses. He says, don't worry when they arrest you, when they persecute you, don't worry about what you're going to say because it's not you who speak, but it is the spirit of your father who speaks in you. Many of us would not be happy to have the spirit of our earthly father speak through us because that spirit was ugly. That spirit was evil many times, obviously not all the time, but what Jesus promises is that the spirit of your true father, your true self, the father of your true self, the spirit of Jesus Christ is the one who will speak in you when you submit to him. So that's, that's what, and when he speaks through you, life happens. God spoke and the world came into existence. God speaks and life happens. So the benefit, you benefit yourself, but you benefit the world when you are filled with with the fullness of God, because the spirit of your father in heaven will speak through you and bring life into the world. The promise that comes from Jesus is that righteousness and peace and joy will come into your life through him. If you have joy, 
You don't need anything else. So just trust him. Whatever it is that he's telling you right now to give up, and I think that he's already speaking to you about what that thing is, maybe those things, trust him. Maybe you, won't, maybe you only have the courage or the faith to take the first step of one of those things, but take it and then take the next one, and then take the next one. Don't think about what you're going to do for the next week. Don't think about what you're going to do for the rest of the day. In this moment, right now, do what he's asking you to do. Give up that thing, as Paul tells us to do. I think it's in Ephesians. Put off the old man. Put on the new one. This is the day that the Lord has made. Choose today who you will serve. The fullness of God is yours. You just have to want it enough to try. To, to, you just have to want it enough to pursue it and allow the, uh, the sacrifices required for it to happen. All right. Hope to see you guys on the road. Uh, I'll be doing fewer videos uh, over the next two weeks just because I'll be on the road. But I will be posting on Telegram, sharing about what God's doing. We're also filming during this trip so that at the end of it, we'll put together one big vlog, probably 30 minutes or so, uh, so you can see what God did uh, with us on this journey. And I hope that that will inspire you to step out in faith and be used by God. We need, we need uh, Christians to be full of the Spirit of God right now. All right, God bless.